Hi, hey Cherry Bunch. So good to have you with us Welcome. this morning. I'm Charlene. <laughs> and I'm Megan. So nice to see you all yeah. through the screen. It's great to be able to connect together and yeah, do great. church online. Isn't it wonderful? Welcome. If it's your first time, we want to say a huge welcome to you as well. Let us know in the chat if you're joining us for the first time today. Yeah. yeah. And we've been talking off camera. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> like we do in our normal services, we have a time that we get to chat with the person next to us and kind of meet and greet. And so for our meet and greet, we were talking about what's coming up and that's school holidays. Ooh, love them or hate them. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it's either side of the fence, isn't it? We wanted to know what are you doing in your school holidays? Do you have any activities planned, family fun things, introvert time? What are you going to do, Charlene? I'm going to read a book, maybe. Oh. Or were you talking about what am I doing with the kids? <laughs> or both. Yes, it could be both. That sounds like a great plan What are for you, you doing, though. mate? <laughs> well, I don't have kids, so I'm going to be going on my own little adventure, I think. Yeah. A bit of alone time, just a chance to soak up the sunshine. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because spring is here. <laughs> spring is here. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. It's wonderful. Pop what you're doing in the chat and let us yes. know. We want to hear all about your fun activities you've Yay. got planned. Hey, and if you are connecting with us via YouTube or Facebook today, why don't you grab another device and jump onto the chat at hopeuc.tv and That's join right. in with us. And every week, church, our online team gather together before the service at 8.15 a.m. to pray. We'd love to extend that invitation to you as well. If you want to join us in prayer or you just want to be part of the community, please join us at hopeuc.tv every week, 15 minutes before the service starts. Yeah, prayer is powerful. Mm. And we've got some um, prayer requests that have come in and we're united here today in faith and we've got such a great opportunity to pray for them. Yes. And if I could just share some of them with you. Um, we've got um, someone who's suffering with insomnia, depression, mm. maybe some suicidal thoughts. Mm. Um, and we're going to pray over this beautiful man today. Yes. There is um, someone who's needing financial and employment stability. Mm. And, and maybe you haven't put in a request, but maybe these are speaking to you right now. We're going to mm. include you in this prayer. Yes. Um, there's someone believing for healing who suffered a stroke and a heart attack. Yeah. And there's also someone needing healing in the area of mental health today. And, mm. and Megs, if you don't mind, we're just going to oh, pray. Megs, you can lead us. Yes. We're just going to believe together in the power of prayer right now. That's right. Why don't you lift your faith with us, church, as we believe for God to do miracles. Yes. Lord, we just thank you that you are the miracle worker. And today, mm -hmm. I really feel in my heart to pray for freedom. And I just speak yes. that over each person, Lord, that's yes. suffering yes. at the moment, God, or whatever they're facing. I thank you that you are Lord over it and we declare your sovereignty. We come under the authority and the power of the name of Jesus and we speak freedom. I thank you that your word promises where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so we speak that to every life, every individual. And we thank you in advance for the miracles that you are going to do and the testimonies that are going to come out of these hard places. I pray for grace and peace and strength for your people today and that you would help just ignite our faith to believe again, God to hope again, to trust you, to see the miracle outworked. We thank you that you are good and you are faithful every moment, Lord. And we give you the glory today in Jesus' most powerful and precious name we pray together. Amen. 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 That's beautiful. Mm. And maybe you're sitting there today and you've got a prayer need of your own. I just encourage you to jump on, press the button that says prayer request. And we yeah. have a team that will pray one on one with you confidentially. It won't be part of the chat. Yes. Or you can send your prayer request to us at talk to us at hopeuc.com. That's right. So good. Well, church, we're going to come around the Word together just in a moment and continue in our great series of the strength of joy. But why don't you worship with us, hey? Open your heart, sing out, get ready to give God all the praise. Yeah.
Everybody, Darlene here, and it is my honour to talk to you today about the pursuit of joy. This has been a fantastic series. When was the last time that you were truly filled with joy? You know, there's lots of joyful moments, right, in life, being with the people you love, being celebrated maybe, 
for a job well done, maybe helping someone in their life. It's such a joy giving way to live. I always remember that song, I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. And we've been singing this song actually um, that's got that chorus in it. It's a new song, but it's got that, that chorus in it. And I was thinking about it and I thought, actually, that's part of the problem when it comes to joy, when it comes to a Christ follower, is that often that joy, 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 the fruit of the Spirit ends up kind of deep down and never finds its way out. And I guess I want to talk to you today about living in that overflow of joy in your life. You know, my earliest memories as a young Christian is a memory that somehow someone had shared with me, like the greatest secret ever told. And and my heart, which due to my upbringing, it used to ache in my chest at night. I'll never forget it because it was my BC life, my before Christ life. My heart used to ache. And yet when I encountered Jesus, my life, my heart, my soul, my flesh, started to embrace a different set of values. And the God of heaven and earth was now alive in me. And this feeling was so hard to describe to anybody. I was often without words. But later on, I found this book by C.S. Lewis, this book called Surprised by Joy. He wrote, and I quote, I had no slightest hint that there had ever been or would ever be any connection between God and joy. I had hoped that the heart of reality might be found in a place. Instead, I found it to be in a person. So beautiful. See, joy, as far as the dictionary goes, it's defined as a feeling of great happiness or pleasure, especially of an elevated or spiritual kind, which is awesome. And this joy that I'm talking about today, you know, it's not found in any form of Eastern religion or a trance-like state. It's not some sort of high that ignores the realities of our lives. This joy is not about faking it, kind of putting on a pretend smile, popping your mask on while everything inside of you is feeling sad. It's not, it's not fake. No, this, this joy is not just a matter of temperament, like for the sanguines of the world, an experience that's got to be manufactured for yourself or other people. This joy is the fruit of the Spirit of God, the results of living in Christ. Remember, in Him I live and move, and have my being. And rather than an experience dependent emotion, right? Like when everything's good, I'm joyful. When everything's not, I'm not. This joy is Christ dependent. His unchanging character, his unchanging devotion and love toward us. So we're gonna read from Galatians, Galatians 5. And I'm reading from the Amplified today. It says, the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting. It's a great definition of patience. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. See, if you are just looking within yourself for joy, you're looking in the wrong place (laughs) because it all begins with God, our Creator. And it's all sustained in God, looking unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. See, family, we were made by God, for God, for His pleasure. And until we understand that, our search for joy, it's always quite elusive, like trying to grab hold of something that's just out of reach. So we do experience momentary joy, but this joy we have in Christ is anchored to His nature and His faithfulness. 
Psalm 30, verse 5, it says, His anger is but for a moment. His favour is for a lifetime. Weeping may endure for a night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Paul reminds us in Philippians 4, he says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you consider it in all that you do. Remember the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. I mean, that's a big thing, right? He says, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. And then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as we live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, he says one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honourable and right and pure and lovely and admirable and think about the things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you heard from me and saw me doing. And he says, and then the God of peace will be with you. So we read that and we go, well, that's great for Paul. But remember the Apostle Paul, he wrote these words while in prison. And despite his circumstances, he chose to focus on Christ. And through Christ, this joy just starts to flow out of him. He did not let his circumstances rob him of joy, but he found his joy in the Lord. And he encourages us to do the same. See, Isaiah 55, it says this, and I love this little piece of scripture. It says, you will go out with joy. You'll be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills will break forth into singing before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. And instead of the thorn, shall come up the cypress tree and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall be not cut off. See, the Bible here is describing this depth of happiness, a depth of happiness, just not this shallow, I'm happy, but a depth, the mountains and the hills breaking out in joy and thorns which is symbolic of everything that makes life hard. All the things that hurt, the the thorns, that's what this means. And some Bibles actually, then they talk about heaven and others talk on the goodness and faithfulness of God here on earth. And in spite of, of the prickles and thorns in this life, that this joy will burst forth like new life. See, the Bible wants us to totally know the fruit of God's Spirit in our lives, to live within a framework of confident expectation, to look forward to all that God has in our lives. I love that it says, and it shall be to the Lord for a name. See, God's intention and work to fill us with joy is for the glory of His name. And this will be a name for the Lord, a testament to God's faithfulness. Now, let me put it this way. See, joy, that fruit of the Spirit, joy, the the joy that comes from the, the throne room of God. You know, it's how we carry Him into our life. You know, His presence upon us and in us and around us. And we carry this joy. And it's not our joy as much as it's His joy in us. You know, I've discovered as I've gotten older, His joy actually is my identity. It's who I really am. It's, uh, I am, I've always been a glass half full person. I'm not really a, a very melancholic person, but sometimes when I have sensed that joy being taken, it's like being stolen. It's like, no, 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 my identity is the joy of the Lord. And I carry that into everywhere I go. And it's amazing that the script here 
describes mountains and hills like all of nature joining in this celebration. And this is what the goodness of God look, looks like. It doesn't mean all the circumstances of life are all lined up and perfect. It means that God himself is perfection and his spirit is alive in me. God makes his people happy. This is one of the great signs that we have to the world. This is part of the power of joy in our lives. It's so good. Joy equals strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. If you're looking sometimes at why you're not feeling strong, just go straight to how much joy you're feeling. You know, it's a really good barometer of how you're doing when it comes to joy. In 1 Peter 1, verse 3, and again, I'm in the Amplified, it says, Blessed, gratefully praised and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant and boundless mercy, stay with me, has caused us to be born again, as reborn from above, spiritually transformed to an ever living hope and confident assurance through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, what an amazing intro. And then it says, we're born anew into an inheritance which is imperishable beyond the reach of change, undefiled, unfading, reserved in heaven for you. You who are being protected and shielded by the power of God through your faith for salvation that is ready to be revealed for you in the last time. In this you rejoice greatly, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, which is much more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested and purified by fire, may be found to result in your praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus. And though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And though you do not even see Him now, you believe and trust in Him and you greatly rejoice and delight, listen, with inexpressible and glorious joy, receiving as the result, the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Look, it's a big chunk of Scripture, but it's like lining out to us line by line of all that God has done for us. And it says, let your heart overflow Enjoy, read it out, family, even in the midst of trial and take heart. See, God knows us and He comes to us in this world of pain, in this world of sadness and moral collapse and disaster. There's just like so much disaster. It is a sad world. And yet, and yet, there is joy unspeakable, full of glory and we can and should be the happiest people in the world. In 2 Corinthians 6 it says, though sorrowful yet always rejoicing, always rejoicing. You know there are a few enemies of joy, things that come to kind of rob you of your joy, fear of disappointment. You know there are many who never really enter into true joy for fear of being let down or disappointment. You don't want to let your heart fully go because what if my expectations aren't realised? What if I get hurt? Maybe you don't follow a dream because what if it doesn't work? You know, people sometimes don't even want to form new relationships because again, maybe you've been hurt in the past and you don't want to go there again. But my friends, this is why we need God to travel this bumpy, curvy road called life. See, in life, we are disappointed from time to time. People will fall short of your expectations. And can I even say church will fall short of your expectations because we are flesh. But you know, many don't even consider the options of a joy-filled life because their families never walked the road of joy. They've never been modeled a family of joy. So like, how do I do this? And sometimes, you know, it feels like 
if I am joyful, I'm not being loyal to the pain that is being experienced around me. You know, so I'll keep my life expectation low and I won't get disappointed. So it's like this fear of disappointment. But I want to say to you today, family, that the Spirit of God, he is, it's through His Spirit that even in the toughest of times, you can be filled with joy in His presence. And don't let that fear of disappointment rip you off from your future. You know, another enemy of joy is simply forgetfulness. What do I mean by that? You know, we come to church, we go home on a Sunday, we go to bed confident that God exists. We've heard the word. We know God's in control. And yet somehow overnight, the sea of forgetfulness comes in by morning, you're a bit lost at sea. And you know, forgetfulness doesn't really come in like a tornado. It comes more like a breeze. You kind of forget that the joy of the Lord is your portion and Quickly, the cares of the day dictate to you your position in life. And Scripture warns us of forgetfulness. If we read about the Israelites, I mean, they're a great example. God parts the Red Sea. I mean, can we just stop and think about that for a minute? He delivers His people by splitting an ocean. And they walk through, they celebrate, they dance with great songs of joy and triumph. And three days later... They're complaining again, and this time about the water supply. So God, because He's merciful, He comes through, supplies them with sweet water from the rock, and they complain about the food. Can you see this little pattern? God comes through with manna, and around and around it goes. 40 years of forgetting to, as Psalm 16 says, be filled with joy in His presence. What is it that you've forgotten? that God has done in your life. See, even that remembering everything God has done allows His joy to be unlocked in the deepest part of who you are. So how do we keep pursuing joy and living in joy? You know, there's lots of things I could talk to you about today, but just a couple of things. The first one, obedience. Obedience as a Jesus follower fills your heart with joy. See, Isaiah 58, 13, it kind of lays out a little pattern for us. It just says, if you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, doing as you please, if you call the Sabbath a delight, my holy day honourable, it goes on, it says, don't just do as you please or don't speak idle words. It says, then you will find your joy in the Lord (laughs) and I will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. The prophet is saying here with great confidence that there is strength and joy that flows out of pure obedience. When you see the peace of God accompany the obedience to God, the joy that comes is like nothing else. Obedience. Here's another one. Be a peace promoter. What do I mean by that? Well, Proverbs 12 says, there is deceit in the hearts of those who plot evil, but joy for those who promote peace. Now, we recently did a whole series on the Beatitudes about blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll see God. It's it's a, really good to th- um, it's a really good kind of picture and a, and a thing to ask yourself. Do I abound in peacemaking or do I abound in chaos making? You know, do I exist from drama to drama even when there is no drama? You know, some people have the ability to turn everything into drama purely actually not because they're not great people. It's because they have how they have learned to exist in this world. It's amazing. Have a think about what happens when you walk into a room. Do you leave peace or do you leave confusion? It's a really good thing to think about and take before the Lord because the Bible says, if I bring peace, I will experience joy. Joy. Another thing, you know, it's a, it's a choice. Hey, it's always been a choice to praise, to worship. I look at the word when joy, when joy, when Job, sorry, was at his all-time lowest, 
his soul cries out and he actually says that there was no longer a shout of joy heard in his land. We read in Lamentations, due to great disobedience, Jerusalem was faced like with with chaos. And and chapter five in Lamentations says, one of the saddest phrases in the Bible, it says, the elders are gone from our gates. The young men have stopped their music and joy is gone from our hearts. Our dancing has turned into mourning and the crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, we have sinned. And the teachings held within the Psalms are some of the greatest on showing, displaying for us how to turn our petitions and our cries into statements of praise. Because when I say choose to praise, you know, praise is not for just when things are going great. I mean, it's easy to praise when life is just going gangbusters, but the golden praise is found when things are going wrong. It's when you put on your garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. And you know what it requires? It requires faith. Psalm 27, my head will be exalted above my enemies who surround me. And at his tabernacle, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. It doesn't say it's gonna be easy. It says this may be a sacrifice, but you're gonna sing you got to make music to the Lord. Psalm 28 says, The Lord is my strength, my shield. My heart trusts in Him and I'm helped. My heart leaps for joy. And I'll give thanks to Him in song. In verse 5, it says, God has ascended amidst shouts of joy. Shouts of joy. See, a, a shout kind of declares by faith. It, it's, a, it's quite a prophetic action to shout and shouts of joy. It's like I'm seeing God, let God arise and His enemies be scattered. Psalm 149 says, let the saints rejoice in His honour and sing for joy on their beds. And may the praise of God be in their mouths, a double-edged sword in their hands. I love it. See, people of praise, people who know how to praise, they are overcomers. They know how to stand and fight and declare the goodness of God. They know what is worth fighting for. You know what is worth fighting for. Come on, family. Don't let the enemy steal your joy and silence your song. Joy is your inheritance. It's part of your salvation package. Learn to worship. Make a choice. Yet I will praise him. One of the most powerful scriptures about this theme is found in this little compelling narrative of Habakkuk the purposes of God and all that is happening in his nation. And it's actually um, said it's for the choir director, this little prayer, to be accompanied by stringed instruments. I love how the Bible is so specific. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms, there's no grapes on the vine. Even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die, in the fields and the cattle barns are empty. Here it is, yet I will rejoice. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. This scripture isn't about putting on something fake. It is yet I, I am choosing to let the joy of the Lord, which is my strength, bubble up from within me. There's a big yet in this. See how trusting God is shown in our joy, even in the worst of situations. Economy, the situation that Habakkuk is writing at this time, we we just see that he is choosing to enter into joy. He says, yet will I. And you know, when I'm wrapping this up now, but I want to encourage you to have that yet will I kind of um, stubbornness about you when it comes to walking in the things of God and the fruit of the Spirit. Things are tough, yet will I praise Him. Finances are tight, yet will I sing for joy. Health is a challenge, yet I'm going to praise my God. I'm going to stand on His promises. Maybe our anxiety is overwhelming, yet will I praise Him. Whatever it is, relationships, self-condemnation, yet God, teach me how to come before you and receive the joy from the fruit of the Spirit. See, for Habakkuk, the the deer, 
that we read about in that chapter is this strong image of this confidence and this agility and success. It reminds him that in God, there's always a way forward. A little extra thing for me when it comes to joy that, that I have found, get creative. If, you've, if you're feeling flat, you know, I love in the parable of the talents in verse 23 of chapter 25, the master says to the faithful servant who doubles his money, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I'll now put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Enter your master's joy. Interesting um, choice of words. See, our creative nature is essential to who we are. And I'm not talking about just music or art. I'm talking about you can be creative in a business sense, creative in a home making sense, creative in raising your children, creating in, creative in how you're going to approach your study and what you're going to dream about. We're, we're creative because we've been created in the image of the most creative being. And joy springs from the heart of one who has created something out of nothing or order out of chaos like our God. Fruitfulness is actually what we are created for. And sometimes all we need to do to refresh and refuel our joy meter is to do something creative as children of the most creative being. The same God who flung the stars into space, who paints majestic sunsets every day, then sweeps them away and starts again, who lovingly handcrafted you and I for his pleasure. So we should not be surprised at our innate need to be creative. The greatest immediate access we have to this power of joy and how we pursue joy, you know, is really boiling it down to the Father's love. Why do I say this? John 15, 9 says, As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Now remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in His love. Then He says, I have told you this so my joy may be in you and that your joy will be complete. Isn't that amazing? The Father's love so that we bring Him joy and that He fills us with joy. If you've lost your strength, if you can't even, you know, you don't want to be creative, you don't want to do any of those things, can I just say, find your joy by getting close to God. Find your joy by nestling in, by remaining in Him. Sometimes it's just sitting in the Word and, and sitting on a psalm and just reading it over and over and over until the words start to go from your head to your heart. Maybe it's spending time on your knees in prayer before the Father. Maybe it's just letting the worship of God, letting songs be sung over you as the Father invites you into intimacy with Him. Do you know the, the times that I really struggle in, area, in any area of life is when I realise that I'm not resting in God's promises. And this is when I lose my joy. And He says, come, remain in me. Sit down in me. The scripture that we use at the end of every service at Hope You See, Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may, what? Overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, not me conjuring up joy. My pursuit of joy is answered by my pursuit of Jesus. And joy, unspeakable, full of glory, it's not just for my benefit. Every time we are filled with joy, this joy just is spread. Isaiah 60, arise, shine, nations will come to your light. Verse five says, you will look and be radiant and your heart will throb and swell with joy. In verse 15, it says, I will make you the everlasting pride and the joy of all generations. Everlasting joy will be theirs. 
um, in chapter 65, it says, My servants will sing out of the joy of their hearts. Chapter 66, let the Lord be glorified that we may see your joy. Family, it's available for you today. Let us remember the words of Paul in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. I pray today that we make a conscious decision again to pursue Christ as he fills us with joy in his presence that we may take the joy of the Lord to the world. Our world is starved of joy. Let's be joy bringers in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, today, you are just so kind. I just want to say thank you for all the gifts that you've given us. You are so good. And your mercy and your faithfulness toward us is really hard to wrap our heads around. But today, that fruit of the Spirit, I just thank you today that each one of us, no matter where we are in life, we can confidently say that your joy is our strength. I thank you for your love, Lord God. And I pray for anyone here today who is listening to this message and recognizes right now their need for you. Father, I pray that they will open their hearts to you and receive you as their Lord and their Saviour. Lord God, I just thank you for what you're doing across the earth and we give you all glory and all honour and all the praise in your most perfect and precious and powerful name. Amen and amen. If anything from that amazing message is um, playing on your heart and, and you have not entered a relationship with Jesus or offered your heart to Him uh, or just need some victory in your life today, uh, I want to offer the opportunity for you to be in relationship with Jesus, uh, find salvation and join this amazing family of faith. I remember for me when I made this decision to give my heart to the Lord, I wasn't looking for anything in particular. But the moment I said yes, the moment I prayed that prayer, of salvation, I found a victory and I felt a victory of what God did on the cross for me, for you and for everyone on the planet. Um, if that's for you, I would love to pray for you this morning and someone on our team would as well. So just click the link in the chat and one of our team will pray for you, lead you in that prayer. But I'd love to pray for you as well today. So Heavenly Father, thank you so much for what you did for us on the cross. And Lord, if, if we haven't stepped into that relationship with you, we say yes to you this morning. We say yes to what you did on the cross and we accept what you did for us, Heavenly Father. And we say we are Christian uh, and we are members of your family and for your Holy Spirit to lead us. And everyone said, Amen. Amen, Amen. And also church, it's a, it's a wonderful privilege to lead you today in communion. And I wanna be a little bit vulnerable for you with what God's doing in my heart lately. Uh, to be honest, I'm a little bit of a warrior and, uh, and God's been speaking to me about this area of peace and how to bring peace into my worry. And I want to use New and Old Testament Scripture and compare them together um, just to kind of see what this, this biblical peace is. It says in the Old Testament, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord Himself is the rock eternal. And that's in Isaiah 26, verse 3 to 4. And beautifully in the New Testament, it says, I leave the gift of peace with you, my peace, not the kind of fragile peace given by the world, but my perfect peace. Don't yield to fear or be troubled in your hearts. Instead, be courageous. And that's found in John 14, 27. Now, I love the comparison between these two worlds. The Old Testament says the onus is on me to keep steadfast in the Lord and to trust. And I love in the New Testament, we have been gifted peace. We don't have to do anything to obtain it. Sometimes we just have to be reminded that this is on offer for us with no strings attached. So each Sunday we take communion and communion is a reminder to us the gift of what God gave us on that cross. This peace is our assurance and what He did for us. And if you need that peace this morning, I want you to be reminded if God's gifted us peace, it means that sometimes there's gonna be a war and you need to know that that war has been won through His peace. So take that battle of healing, take that battle of fear, of loneliness, of anxiety, whatever it looks like for you today. Let's take that together. So why don't you pick up your emblems and as I pray, you can take them too. 
So Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of the cross and what you did for us. And Lord, for communion where we are reminded in the victory and the peace that you, you've done in our lives, Lord. So any circumstance that's going on right now, Lord, we welcome you into it. Lord, and we just say yes to what your perfect peace is in that New Testament scripture. We love you, we thank you. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you so much, church. Faithfulness in
Wow, what an incredible message on the pursuit of joy. I'm absolutely loving this series and really encourage you, church, to take the words that have been spoken in these weeks and dig into the midweek with God. Really ask Him and invite the Holy Spirit to continue to grow this revelation deep into your own life. I know that's exactly what I'm pursuing right now with God too. And if there's anything you want to share with us or chat with our team about, any questions or revelations, please stick around in the chat after the service and they would love to talk with you. Yeah, that's so good. And Church, now we have come around our time of giving. And I just want to ask you if you want to be part of this beautiful gift, then you can click in the link below or you can jump onto our website. Awesome. And on the screen, right at this moment, there is a QR code appearing. And on that QR code is a link to all the wonderful things that are coming up in the life of our church. It's is it le- it's less than two weeks until gathering. <laughs> Can you believe that? It's going to be amazing. Yes. Meg. So we're going to quickly plug that to you. Make sure that you book tickets. We've got online and in-person available. It's yeah. going to be excellent. We're so expectant and joy is definitely flowing yeah. in anticipation yeah. for this gathering. You don't want to miss it, Church. <laughs> That's right. You don't want to miss it. Well, let us declare the blessing together this yes. morning mm-hmm. as we just stand in faith mm. and speak it now. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> I pray that God, who is the source of hope, will fill us completely with joy and peace because we place our trust in Him. Then we will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Woo. We love you, church. See you soon.